Hello everyone, my name is Ken Mock, and it's wonderful to see you this Sunday morning, 5th of June, 2022. Our minister, the Reverend Sam Mohini, is uh, currently on a three-month sabbatical, and during this period he has kindly invited many special speakers to bring you the Lord's Word every Sunday. Along with these guest speakers, some of the elders of our church will also be sharing with you biblical talks and today it is my pleasure to be humbly taking on this role. And I thank you for your prayers. Speaking of our minister and pastor, we wish Sam a very happy, very significant 60th birthday, which was just a few days ago on the 2nd of June. All together, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Sam. Sam. For those of you who are new to our congregation, we give you our warmest greetings. And for those of you who are here in person, we are delighted to worship with you today. For those of you who are tuning in through our church's YouTube channel, we truly, truly yearn to see you face to face in the coming weeks and months, and equally wholeheartedly welcome you on this Lord's Day. This service would not be possible without the support of the many unseen hands and hearts that keep our congregation afloat every day. I am deeply grateful and we are all indebted to their service. Thank you, Ray, our administrator, Katie, our minister uh, apprentice, Marcus, our guardian, Rachel, Jane, Charlene, and Chan, our musicians today, and Soyoung at the sound desk. We start today's service with a well-known, really pretty song that uh, asks, us, asks us the Lord to cleanse us from our sins deep within, preparing us nicely for all of the subsequent parts today.
Our opening prayer will be kindly led by Robin Brown. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, today we ask you to take our prayers to the Father. We ask you to plead with him. But before we start to ask for anything, Holy Spirit, we would ask that you bring thanks to the Father, thanks to the Son, and thanks to yourself for your work, for your answer to many, many, many prayers, Amen. for your leading us and for your direction. We give to you now, Holy Spirit, remembrance that this, these, we are your servants. Amen. We ask you to renew, reignite the fire within each of us. Amen. That fire which you have, can send burning as you did in Pentecost. We pray that every one of us here and all those who are listening online will be re reignited, reinfused. We pray this, we pray for the spiritual war that is going on around us, around the world. It is a, a war which is much more severe than any of the human wars. And we ask also, Holy Spirit, that you be with Ken, that what he says today resonates with people, goes into people, and that when they go home, or when they finish watching, it will work in their minds and work in their hearts, and they will know and have some feeling. We ask all of this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Robin. Just before we go into scripture, with your permission, I'd like to set the stage. May I suggest that we all be sincere and brutally honest with ourselves and try to ask one question to ourselves and of ourselves. There is no need for anyone else to know. Only yourself or ourself and our Lord will know the answer. The question is, how are things going with you? Or how are things going for you? How goes? This is not the usual question that most of all, most of us will uh, most likely with a platitude answer. Ah, grand. All is grand. Thank you for asking. No, no, no. This is asking you and me to be more analytical, more probing, more in-depth, reflecting and reviewing our own private past, present, and future. If we were to assess ourselves, and again, the answered question will only be known by ourselves and our Lord. Where do we stand in this secular world or amongst the people that are near and dear to us? Or where do we stand in the spiritual world. Heather Meldrum will kindly read from the book of Romans. So it's Romans 5, verses 1 to 5. Romans 3. I'm sorry. Romans chapter 3. Oh, i sorry. I thought it was... It's okay. Heather. And 1 to 5. Uh, so 21 what, to 26. <laughs> pardon, 1. Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 26. Okay, 21 okay. to 26. Yeah, yeah. Take that your time. I did not Take know. your time. Okay. But now a righteousness from God apart from law has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness from God comes from faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. 
for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in, in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice in the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much, Heather, for reading one of Apostle Paul's profound verses. So, forgive me for posing that question before, for it might be folly itself in trying to answer it. The Lord has created us in his image, and the result we patently see is that his image consists of diverse people, all beautiful in their own way, all valued to him and loved by him in their own way. So let's break it down into our worldly, secular view first. The life where we utilize our skills and talents, our experience and education, usually for the attainment of something tangible. The rewards from this effort is also usually practical. It helps us put food on the table, a shirt on our backs, a roof on our heads, pay the bills, educate our children, maintain our health, and support any entertainment activities that interest us. There are, of course, other important elements that we seek with passion, our dreams, our aspirations, certain goals that we may have established when we were young or while carrying out our lives. And not necessarily, but in many cases, particularly in this democratic free market economy of ours, we are able to quantify these goals, be they a promotion to a position of greater responsibility, practicing, performing, or publication of one's work, becoming a leader of one's organization, finding long lost treasure, whatever. In other words, if our secular world was a target board, it will be great, ah, grand, to be able to hit the bullseye. Now, all of us agree, this is by no means an easy feat. How many politicians become leaders of their own parties? How many employees become the CEO of their companies? How many professional football players have the chance to be the ultimate winner, either in the Champions League, the English Premier League, or for us in Ireland, the SSC Electricity League. In the secular world, one could perhaps define this as success, or using that question, things that are going well for us, or hitting the bullseye. I'd like to introduce to you a very, a person who is near and dear to me and someone whom I love dearly, dearly as a decent and humble man. Master Dongmin Cha, Taekwondo black belt, and for about one and a half years, the national coach of the Taekwondo Ireland team. Together with the head coach and team members, Master Cha would supervise and train Ireland's young Taekwondo athletes, taking them to international matches all around the world. What you see here is a lecture that we asked of him to give us in 2019 about his work in Ireland. I believe that the Irish Taekwondo Union, the ITU or Taekwondo Ireland, have had some measures of success with one young man, Jack Woolley, becoming Ireland's first Olympian in Taekwondo and participating in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics with an Olympic world ranking of seven in the world. The Koreans, however, know Master Cha a bit more intimately as he was the 
gold medalist in the 2008 Beijing Olympics, becoming the first Korean to win the heaviest weight category that is currently uh, existing. So a bullseye, you could very much say. A notable thing was that uh, ended up exceeding all expectations and becoming sort of a national hero. With great promise, he entered the 2012 London Olympics, but surprisingly did not advance beyond the quarterfinals. As just mentioned, Master Cha had set a record four years before, in 2008, by becoming the first to win as a heavyweight. But this time, he set a record of notoriety. Korea being the country of origin of Taekwondo, he became the first Korean Taekwondo athlete ever to fail to advance to at least the semifinals, meaning the medal rounds. There will be no need to describe the tabloid media frenzy that resulted. He was labeled complacent, a disappointment, a dishonor to the mother country. Personally, I cannot imagine the embarrassment and pressure he had to take and had to endure after the London Olympics. Where many would have been satisfied with the gold medal one possessed and settle for a comfortable life with dogged determination and with the encouragement of his family, colleagues, and coaches, Dong Min Cha qualifies and participates in another Olympics four years on. He is now 30 years old, supposedly way past his prime, and is amongst a rare breed of those who successfully go to three consecutive Olympic games, eight years after the glory of having a gold medal hung around his neck. Regardless of the sport, regardless of nationality, I'm sure we all have heard how grueling and lonely it is to train as an Olympic athlete. How many times have we heard stories about athletes who can't come to family weddings, to Christmas gatherings, or take summer holidays? This, sacrificing one's own desires or urges or needs to reach a more noble course. Isn't that why we have a deep respect for Olympians? In the case of Master Cha, his final pouring of everything he had resulted in a bronze medal. Very soon after winning this, Master Cha described that winning the bronze medal in 2016 Rio de Janeiro was incomparably more significant and fulfilling than anything else in his life, even, before, even better than winning the gold medal eight years earlier. In other words, my good friend Dong Min felt that the greatest satisfaction he experienced, at least in the sense of how one defines worldly success, was when he had invested everything he had when he risked his reputation, his well-being, since one can always get injured, his time, his material resources. It's funny how we find similarly resonating ideas and passages in scripture. If I were to paraphrase Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, to a secular situation, how does this look to you? So the very back part of that sentence is whited out because it has to do with our faith. How about another passage? This one is well known to us because Sam had taught us about this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Again, we have some blanked out places because it is due to our faith. But even if you read it, in a secular sense, it makes good sense. No doubt, in the secular world, these universal sentiments, rephrased and regurgitated in many different forms, are key to the definition of success 
of hitting the bullseye, of making the mark. I thank the Lord for allowing me to use the Lord's words to segue into our thinking about success now in terms of our faith. Completely different, right? We all agree. No gold, silver, or bronze medals. No target metrics. No comparing to arbitrary standards. For God's love is perfect and absolute. We will profess with our heart, soul, and mind, John chapter 3, verse 16, where it states, whoever, meaning anyone, can be saved. And no, we will not receive relatively longer lives, but everlasting, eternal life. And moving into today's passage, through the shedding of our dear Lord Jesus Christ's blood, we have attained righteousness by our faith. We have become justified by faith. Faith itself having been given to us by grace and as a gift. Although many of us can say these truths with great passion, it is also a fact that once in a while, God sends us a skeptic to whom the Lord wishes us to spread the good news. How would you respond to a person who asks us a very, very fundamental question. Why am I a sinner? I can sort of see, this skeptic will ask us, the second half of the story, that our lives are all messed up and God has come down to sort this mess out. But why am I a sinner? I live an honest life. I work hard to earn my living. I pay my bills and taxes faithfully. I don't steal from anyone. I am faithful to my spouse. I help others when I can. I just can't see why I am a sinner. So these are the questions that he might ask. I apologize that the lettering might be a little bit too small. So these are genuinely good people who obey the laws, such as the Ten Commandments. They honor their parents. They do not covet. So why are they sinners? Some may alternatively have thought about the seven deadly sins instead of the Ten Commandments, which really isn't officially literally listed in the Bible, and more or less was edited by Pope Gregory I in the sixth century. Here we do have pride and envy, two that very few of us can call ourselves innocent from. But again, by and large, hardworking, decent human beings do have a case when they ask us Christians, why am I a sinner? If anything, these seven deadly sins should be remembered for unfairly labeling a poor, harmless, herbivore mammal that lives most of its, life, of its life upside down in the jungles of South America, much too slow to do anything evil. But thanks, or no thanks, to Pope Gregory I, the hapless sloth is forever deadly. So it's our responsibility, our burden, if we really are committed to bringing the secular world closer to our Lord, to be able to explain using today's scripture, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. How does this sentence look to you or come to you? What is our intuitive sense of sin? What is our social historical background when we think of this word? It isn't false to say that the Ten Commandments, the 613 laws written in the Old Testament, and yes, Pope Gregory First's definition of the seven deadly sins do come to our mind ourselves. And as a result, a value judgment accompanies that statement. For all have sinned, and fall short 
of our God's glory. So it's not a surprise to somebody who doesn't come from this Judeo-Christian background who would be asking us what they have done wrong to be convicted as a sinner. But it is truly the meaning of sin. I am in no way a scholar of the original text. But nevertheless, let us look at the original meaning of this troublesome word. In Koine Greek, in the common uh, people, person's Greek, sin is hamartia and is uh, in, uh, in the more original Hebrew context, it is at the bottom, chata. Both mean missing the mark. Failure to hit the bullseye. In the more familiar football content, failure to make the goal. So let's go back to verse 23. Because all of us has, have missed our marks, we are less than capable of representing God's image, God's intent, God's plan of spreading his perfect love to everyone on this planet. So there we might have seen, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But how about this? For all have missed the mark and fall short of the glory of God. Suddenly, a statement of judgment, a statement that appears to challenge our morality now transforms into a statement of our true condition. I hope we can immediately see that verse 23 was not written to bring us down, nor should it ever be used to do that, but for us to brutally and honestly acknowledge that we are frail, feeble, vulnerable beings in need of salvation. This is why in the immediately following passages, God freely gave us through grace, Jesus Christ, who came to wash us of our sins. Or now we can translate to empower us to hit the mark, hit the bullseye. I hope that you do not see this attempt as trying to dilute the importance of the commandments or the law. We are already increasing, we are actually increasing the breadth and depth of sin. It is no longer simply a judgment of our actions or our thoughts. It is now covering our everyday hour, minute, and second of our lives. The reason why the matter of sin is gravely important is because sin matters. There is no longer any moment in our life where or when we are off the hook. The omnipotent and omniscient Lord sees us 365 days a year, 24 seven anyway, so we should keep ourselves accountable just the same. If we meet a skeptic who asks us why he or she is a sinner, we may all have different testimonies that the Holy Spirit will use us to direct this person. I will confess that in my life, there is very little that I do that hits the mark, that I constantly stumble and fall and fail. And as a result, not only disappoint myself or my family, but fall short of the expectations our Lord has of me. And yet, and I wish to emphasize this with, as the most important part, we need to learn from Master Cho, but more importantly, from Apostle Paul. Every day, we need to press on towards the goal. From just because, uh, for just because God forgave us in missing the mark in the past, this doesn't mean that he is giving us license to sit on our bums and just confess that we are always sinners. We indeed should give ourselves fully to the Lord, 
words and in action. Like Master Cha, the greatest satisfaction, no, the greatest satisfaction, not for just us, but who loves the Lord, we will say the greatest victory comes after investing our everything. Because as we see there in 1 Corinthians, our Lord knows that our labor is not in vain. So you may recall that we started from one frank question. How are things going with you? I think that as Christians who have been washed of our sins, we may need to rephrase this question. Instead of saying, how are things going with you, we should probably say, how are things going with your Lord? Or, since we all share the same Abba Father, how are things going with our Lord? Knowing that we are his hand and feet in this world, I hope we can agree that we, as a community, need to work ceaselessly and persistently to stop missing the mark and make it instead. Let us pray. Dear Lord, who uses none other than us, though flawed in many ways, to spread your endless love throughout your creation. Forgive us for always missing the mark. Forgive us for fear of missing the mark, not applying ourselves to the level of your expectations, and in by doing so, missing the mark even more. Forgive us for finding excuses to not put into practice what you have asked of us, and by doing so, missing the mark again. Indeed, Lord, we are sinners. We know very clearly what you expect from us, yet we stumble and fall. Through the blood of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit, encourage us, challenge us, nudge us, and compel us to resemble you and your Son by practicing your perfect love here and now. Despite our many failures, we know that you will be providing everything we need so that we will hit your mark. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now stand together and extol praises of our Lord making joyful noise, singing with energy and intent.
that was pretty good. Thank you very much. Just some announcements. So next Sunday, we will have our dear Alfred Thompson giving us a wonderful talk. Uh, if you have any assistance during this week, uh, please contact your elder or our Tommy or our Ray, please. Thank you. Ah, sorry. This. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, this is hosted by our International Cafe, and it will be on the 12th of June, on Sunday at 1 p.m., so more or less after our service. There will be a walk and talk uh, where the meeting point will be in front of our church. People will all go to Marley Park, and it will be a really nice day out, we believe. And as it says there, bring your lunch. As you know, in the back, when you exit, you will see that there is a defibrillator that is now uh, installed. As we all know, a, any public place needs a defibrillator, but uh, nobody should just take it out and start using it. Just because we've seen it on TV doesn't mean we know how to. So we need a training course, and that will be uh, this coming Saturday. Is that right, this coming Saturday? Yes, 11th of June from 9.30 a.m. to 1 uh, in our church here. Now, we've already asked for some people and volunteers has co have, have, have come up, but there are still two places available. So if you are available uh, to attend, you'd like to try to use these machines and boost someone um, uh, back to life, then you're welcome. Please contact Ray, who today is uh, kindly uh, doing the videography for us. Along with this defibrillator training, we also would like to increase the pool of people who will be uh, manning the sound and video desk. So this will be on the next subsequent Saturday, the 18th of June, from 9.30 to 11.30, again here. Uh, again, you will be able to touch some expensive uh, kit, and if you'd like to, uh, you can mangle it or, or whatever, but it will be a good way to, that, that we ourselves will be able uh, to do the role that Ray, Marcus, and others have kindly done. And our final one is, yes, the church committee meeting will be on Tuesday, the 14th of June, uh, from 7.30, and it will be by Zoom. We'll now come to our prayer of intercession, and our Joan Ryan will kindly give us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on this passage in Romans 3, we thank you that through faith in Jesus, we can enjoy a restored, loving relationship with you, now and throughout eternity. What amazing grace. Thank you that in your amazing grace, you have invited us to come to you when we are weary and heavy laden and that you have promised to give us rest. We pray, Father, for those in our church community who are unwell. We take a moment's silence to name before you those who are on our hearts. Father, you alone know exactly each person we have named and what they are going through. They are all precious to you. We ask you to minister to their individual, physical, emotional and spiritual needs. We pray, Father, that your loving hand would rest upon them and that you would bring healing and peace. Thank you that they and their loved ones are such wonderful examples of ongoing trust in your unfailing love and sovereignty. 
of patience in affliction and of faithfulness in prayer. Your power is truly at work in their lives. Please bless them, Lord. We thank you, Father, for our church community and for enriching and encouraging us with people of many different nationalities. A lovely foretaste of heaven, where all tribes and tongues will worship you together. We pray that the young adults who are away together this weekend will have a safe and enjoyable time, getting to know you and each other better. Amen. We continue to pray that Sam's sabbatical would be a time of refreshment and renewal. And we thank you for all the people who have led the services so helpfully during Sam's absence. We lift up our country to you, Lord. There are so many challenges facing us. The rising cost of living, the housing shortage, the refugee situation, the overstretched health service, to name but some. We pray for the government and for all in authority in these areas, for your wisdom and for your courage to make the right decisions. And please help us, Lord, to remember to support them in prayer. We also pray for all who will sit the Leaving and Junior Cert exams this week. Please calm their minds and help them to focus and think clearly and to answer wisely. Please give their teachers, parents and friends wisdom and understanding as they support them. For those who have completed third level, please give them your wisdom and peace as they make decisions regarding their future. Further afield, Father, we come to you with heavy hearts as the Russian invasion of Ukraine continues. Please comfort the bereaved, the lonely, and the fearful. Heal the injured and those who are traumatized by the horrors of war. Provide for those who have been displaced. Protect and enable aid workers. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to empower your church in Ukraine to be a beacon of light in the midst of the darkness. Amen. God of peace and justice, we call on your mercy and ask that you would grant wisdom, discernment and compassion to all involved in seeking a peaceful resolution. We know that you are a God of miracles, able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. Please change the hearts of those set on violence and destruction and bring about a just and lasting peace. Thank you, Father, for listening to our prayers. We know that you respond to your children's earnest prayers in mighty ways. We leave our requests with you humbly <clears throat> in the name of Jesus and trust that you will answer them in accordance with your good and perfect will. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Joan. I'd also like to thank again our today's uh, music group uh, for Rachel, Jane, Charlene, and Chan, uh, who kindly chose all three songs. The last one, which will be a testimony and declaration to all around the world that we care for them all and we want them to join us in our path towards walking with the Lord.
Let us close today's service by grace, giving this grace to everyone here. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.